Hey, uh, Jared, just talk about the back and forth there in the last minute. You know, you have a tough turnover, but shake it off and make the big time shot. Uh, just take us through those two plays. Uh, yes, yeah, it was a high level game and, you know, that was a good defensive team and down the stretch, you know, coach always says it's going to come down to a free throw. It's going to come down to, like, to one shot or, you know, one pass or one turnover, but, you know, you make mistakes throughout the game and after the turnover, my teammates had a, did a good job of, you know, keeping me composed and telling me the play is over with and move on and, you know, move on to the next play and then, you know, just was able to clear my mind to make the last shot when I got the chance. And just the confidence you had stepping up and, and taking that shot. Did did, did you look to do you think you had a chance to pass or the clock was against you? Uh, I don't know. I just saw that I was open and we needed a bucket. So, you know, I let it go and it went in. You know, I'm grateful for it. Jared, what does it say about the group? No, Nate had a tough game. You didn't have AJ once again, but so, so many others stepped up. What does it say about the group as a whole? I just think we're so connected from the coaching staff to the players, to the managers, you know, it doesn't matter what five we got out on the court, we're going to be able to get the job done. And, you know, we do a lot of preparation. We got a lot of confidence and, you know, we got a lot of belief in each other. So whoever the five is out on the court, you know, everybody on the bench is behind them. And then this next man up to get the job done in order to get the win. And you guys got off to such a great start. Uh, what was the key behind that in your opinion? I don't know when we come in a hostile environment, you know, they were coming off a loss and, you know, they're a top 25 team as well. So we didn't want to get behind and let the crowd have a factor into the game. So we wanted to throw the first punch in that first four minutes and the rest of the game was able to follow behind on that. Thank you, Jared. Jared, did, did you see a mismatch at all in the first half? You were definitely uh, very aggressive uh, off the bounce. Oh uh, yeah, well, they were switching the ball screens and, you know, coach always tells us to, to be aggressive and attack and play on two feet and get in the lane and draw some help defense. But, you know, I was able to drive in and when I had an opportunity to score, I took them and then when it was, when it was help and I had to make a pass to the next open man, I was able to do that as well. How about you being in sync, Jared, with, with Al there and him setting you up for that, that last shot? It seemed like you talk about the connection that you guys all have. You go down the court, it, it looked effortless. Yeah, that's something we just <clears throat> we work on in practice. Last second shots, or you know, when we're just in the gym working out, kicking ahead to one more, and you know, making a pass and making a shot. That's just something we work on every day, and it just happened to be the last second in the game winning basket. So I'm happy to see that hard work pay off. Jared, you played them last year, obviously, and they added uh, Jack Nunji, the big guy. How different is it to play with them against them with that size added to the lineup? Um, definitely gives them a, another scoring presence on the inside, but you know we we just come in every game with the same attitude that we got to punch first and we got to take it to them. And at the same time, they got to deal with us as well. You know they're a great team, but I feel like we're a great team as well. So you know no matter who they have on the opposite side, they got to be able to defend us and we got to be able to defend them. Jared, what's it what's it mean to get the win? You know at, at their home arena, I believe PC was one and nine. You know there heading into this game. Uh, it means a lot. We, all, we we've been saying this is a big week for us coming up. We got two top twenty-five teams, and you know we want to stay in first place. We want to stay at the top of the Big East. So knowing we gotta we gotta find some way to walk out of here with a win to keep us in that position later on in the season, and we were able to get that done. All right, one more question for Jared. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jared. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm sorry. Just a um, just a just a great win for our men. Uh, you know, really, you know, I thought we set the tone early. I thought we were shot out of a cannon. You know, coming in, knowing we're playing against a team coming off of a tough loss, I believe. Um, you know, we haven't had the success here. Last year it came down. You know, it's almost mirror game, a mirror image of last year, to be honest with you. Yet we coming away with the win. They had a three to beat us basically with 0 0.2 seconds on the clock. Jones hit a three, so um, really hard place to play. Great team, great balance. But if you'd have told me that Nate Watson would struggle the way he did and, you know, we would have, you know, three turnovers under two minutes, uh, you know, it goes to tell you the maturity of the group, uh, the resilience of the group. And, you know, um, great job, baby, great job. And uh, just happy for our group, guys. Happy for our group and look forward to get on this plane to head back try to beat this storm back and prepare for whenever we're going to play next. Hey, Ed, obviously, Jared's shot was big time, but what were you thinking defensively <laughs> out of that last time out when, when Scruggs, uh, you, get, you get Scruggs to miss? Well, we wanted to go, man. You know, we wanted to try to keep him off balance. We played zone and man, and, you know, they had a really good offensive set where Jones literally 
walk down the lane naked and, and dunk the ball, which I was very disappointed. And yet, you know, we called, you know, we called timeout. Uh, Durham really came through, good isolation call uh, to get him to the foul line, made two free throws. And then we got a great stop, one of the better stops we've had in a long time, and then compounded defense to offense. How about Jared Bynum? And that's 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 that the, all Americans make those plays. Yeah, uh, just uh, on the shot, uh, you know, he's he's not your best three point shooter, but his confidence shooting the ball in the last three weeks seems to have really, really gone up. In all honesty, I don't know who our best shooter is. You know, I mean, it's it's on any given night, to be honest with you. You know, this is just a team Our numbers metrically, the way we play, how we play, when we shoot, you know, with all the uh, you know, with, with all the professionals that are analytics people. We kind of defy the odds with analytics based on the way we play. So, you know, we're just very fortunate. Coach, I know you've said uh, you think Justin is a Big East defensive player of the year caliber guy. Is that why you had him on the center there for that last play? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. You know, because, you know, we knew they were, you know, we, we knew where the ball's going to go. You know, in this league, you got somebody like Scruggs, who's a first team all conference player. He's been in many, many, many close games. You knew he was going to eat, he take the shot and or Nunji take the shot. So uh, we hedged our bet and put him on, you know, the guy who was hurting us the most. Uh, and he, again, he was big time. He had one of the really, really big plays where he tapped it out late in the game. Um, I don't know what we did on that, but he's just phenomenal, phenomenal defensive player. And we talk about Justin's ability to play defense all the time. The last like five or six games, he's shooting like 50% from deep. With AJ on the bench, especially during this run, what has that done for your offense? Well, you know, he's he's learning what we're trying to do. When you have these fifth-year guys that come in for one year, the men who have the most success buy in early. And his buy-in as a teammate, his buy-in as a student, his buy-in as just a great, uh, great blue guy. And then the coaches just give him a compliment. You know? Hey, guys, mute your, uh, mute your phone, please. Sorry about that. So, you know, it's it's just a matter of continuing to instill confidence and he's just learning what we're doing. You know, we've only had him, what, six, seven months, if that, you know, we've had him since May, May or June. Good job, Al. Good job. Way to shoot free throws. I'm proud of you, my man, right? Players make coaches. Coaches don't make players. And Ed, I have to ask about, uh, you know, the official announcement of Steve Napolillo becoming the next AD. Just uh, your initial thoughts? Yeah, obviously very excited for him. I mean, he's earned it. He's worked at it. You know, uh, all of us, even on the screen, you know, when we got that call with the positions that we currently sit in, we're excited. I'm happy for his family. You know, it's a different role that he'll be in, and he's going to need a lot of support of which he's going to get from Father Sicard. I think it's a phenomenal hire with the relationships that he's built. He bleeds Friar, uh, you know, uh, Friar blood. So I'm excited about him. But, you know, this ain't about Steve today, baby. This is about those players in that locker room. Good for you, Steve. You know, I don't know what to tell you, but this is about those players in a lot. That was one Hell of a Big East basketball game. Seriously, that thing was back and forth. I'm like, I actually had fun coaching it, to be honest with you. That was, that was, that was a lot of fun. Coach, first yeah. road game in three weeks for your team there. You know, you couldn't tell by the way you guys played today. What did you see from your team that was able to stay so consistent throughout the game today? You know, I give our kids a lot of credit. We haven't had too many games where we've come out like kind of flat, so to speak. You know, I mean, we, we've been able to answer the bell early and you knew they were going to make a run. They're playing at home. It's a sellout crowd. It's two top 20 teams playing. Um, you know, I just think, you know, we're mature. We're older. We didn't lose our composure. Uh, when they took the lead, I probably lost my composure more than them. Um, but good for them, man. This, this is a player driven organization and, and the players really showed up today. Really, really proud of this one. This one's a proud moment for Providence College men's basketball. Yeah, just the poise Ed, that that a guy like Al has when he can go to the free throw line, go ten for ten, <laughs> but also on that last shot, he's you know driving down the court and you know he looks behind him and has the poise and the maturity enough to look behind him and say, "All right, Jared's right there. He can get a great shot." Unselfish. Um, it's a credit to his character as a player. You know, when we when you know when we talked to Archie Miller about him. He said, you know, he's a winner. Um, you're going to love him on the team. And we're trying to get him more shots, not having AJ to floor is really, really tight. And, you know, and, and when you look around and, you know, somebody asked me earlier, hey, well, what is it with your team? I'm going to use the national narrative. We're really lucky. We're really lucky team. So, you know what? We'll continue to be lucky and try to win the next game.
Coach, a lot of Jared's success has been coming off the bench this season. Uh, what does it say about him just buying into that role and making the most of it? Again, team, you know, again, with, you know, with, 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 with AJ being out, AJ being out, we've been shorthanded for now almost a month. And um, it just, it, it, it shows to the maturity of the group, you know, shows to the maturity of the group and shows to his maturity. It's not about him. It's about us just trying to build a, some continuity and some chemistry amongst the team. Thank Is there you. an update on when AJ might be back? I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't know. You know, there he is right there smiling. Doves. Doves. You know, um, I don't. Um, he is getting better, though. I mean, his injury is a four to six week injury. And, uh, you know, I'll talk to our great medical team and see what we got. We miss him. We need him. We need him. These games won't get any easier. It's, it's, it's rough out there.